Amen. That was just beautiful. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Linda. Welcome, my friends. Welcome to worship here at North Little Rock First United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Annie Langford, and it is a joy to be with you this morning and to welcome Reverend Phil Hathcock back into our pulpit this morning. So I have just a few announcements for you this morning. That Connect card, you know, we say it every week. Take a picture, log on, please tell us you're visiting or you're be you've been here for years, right? Either way, we want to know that you are here or that you are worshiping with us online. We want to know your prayer requests. We want to know if you need something from us. We really do read those every single week and lift those up in staff meetings. So please, please uh, fill out that Connect card. Also, um, if you'll notice at the exit, there are still some of those uh, buddy bookmarks for all of our children, prayer buddy bookmarks. I had that wording wrong. Uh, at the exits, they are the names of all of our children here at church. Some of you have picked them up. There are still more children who don't have bookmarks picked up. So it, whether you've picked one up or you haven't, pick up another one, pick up three or four of them, and remember those children in your prayers as they are in a new school year. We want to make sure that every one of our children is lifted up in prayer this year. So grab, grab a couple of those on your way out. Um, also, we have um, a new ministry starting. Um, it's not really new, it's just a new group, Grief Share. So if you have lost a loved one, whether it was years ago or it was yesterday, we welcome you into this support group, this learning group, this loving group. We will start September 7th at 10 a.m. Donna Drury will be leading us for this 13 weeks, and we welcome anyone who needs to come, come and go, come and stay for the whole time, check it out. Um, but I would really encourage you uh, to join us for that. And then the fall food drive. We are smack dab in the middle of this, collecting food for our backpack ministry. Gwen and her team does such a great job. Drop off your food. Um, in the, there's a table out there for you to drop your food off. There's a flyer in your bulletin that tells you all the food that we need. Um, so when you go to the grocery store, take that with you. Bring it uh, throughout the week. Bring it next week. Um, and we thank you so much for supporting the backpack ministry as well. So now, as we enter this time of worship, I invite you to pray with me. God of grace, powerful weakness. At times, your projects were ignored or rejected, belittled and unwelcome. Trusting that we too are called to be prophets, fill us with your spirit this morning and support us by your gentle hands, that we may persevere in speaking your word and living our faith. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us call ourselves to worship God in this place on this beautiful day of life that he has given us. People who follow Jesus, here are your instructions. Take, Take nothing for your journey and trust in God. Proclaim the goodness of God's love. Let our voices and our actions be filled with love. Come, now is the time to worship. Let us prepare us this day to truly be the disciples you would have us to be. Let us continue now as we sing the words written by Isaac Watts. Hymn number 152, I sing the almighty power of God. Sing the wisdom that ordained the 
sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at God's command, and all the stars obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord, who filled the earth with food, who formed the creatures through the word, and then pronounced them good. Lord, how thy wonders are displayed, where'er I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread, or gaze upon the sky, there's not a plant or flower below but makes thy glories known. And clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne. While all that borrows lie from thee is ever Let us continue now as we uh, affirm together our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed found on 81 in your hymnal or on the screens. Let us say together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Today is a super special day, like I say every time I get up here, but today is special because it is my husband's birthday. And in that note, because he's not here at this service, I could say whatever I want to about him because he already went home because he came to first service. But what I'm really going to tell you is how we first met. My husband's very first remembrance of me as a human being in the world was at the Little Rock International Airport in 1999 when we were both about to embark on a semester abroad in London, England. And at that time, our flight was fully booked and I learned I was not going to be allowed to take my extra carry-on onto the plane with me. Well, long story short, I am a huge overpacker. I do not like to be underprepared. And so I had everything from the clothes I might need to the kitchen sink shoved into all of the luggage that I thought I was going to be bringing on this four month long trip. And instead I got to start shoving some more of it with my suitcase completely unzipped in the middle of the airport, cramming things in, trying to sit on it and get it reshut just to make sure that I would have everything I could possibly think of when I arrived in London. Did I need all that? 
Probably not. And at first service, Scott said, that was a red flag from the seat in the, in the pew. But, you know, things went on. And, and here we are 20 years later. We have two children. We go to work every day. And who always has everything everybody needs when there's a Band-Aid? Or do you have that number or whatever? Who has that? Me. What does that have to do with our children's message today? Let me tell you, kids. It's great to be prepared, but sometimes, and this is for you too, trusted grown-ups, sometimes we don't need all that stuff. And our message today, and I'm reading from the message, it's a little bit different from Pastor Phil's version that he's going to be reading, it comes from Mark, and it's Jesus talking to the disciples, and he's telling them, this is the most important thing you need to remember as you go out to preach the word's gospel. He said, don't think you need a lot of extra equipment for this. You, you are the equipment. No special appeals for funds. Keep it simple. And no luxury ends. Get a modest place and be content there until you leave. If you're not welcomed, not listened to, just quietly withdraw. Don't make a scene. shoulders and be on the way. Then they That last line was then they were out on the road. That life can be right and left. They sent the demons packing. They brought wellness to the sick, anointing their bodies and healing their spirits. This last said, preach that life can be radically different. If you remember nothing else from what I said this morning, I want you as Christians, whether you're a kid or a grown-up or somewhere, someone, in the, someone somewhere in between, go out this week and make life radically different with God's love for someone. Thanks. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, in these changing times, in our brokenness, division, violence, prejudice, bring us once again to your side, calling and sending us in your name. Give us the courage to travel light, to downsize, and to embrace the freedom that it brings. Give us the blessing of being fully present, of trusting you for provision for ourselves and your saving work in the moment it is needed. Give us the wisdom to know our role, to move on from failure and rejection, to move on from accomplishment and welcome. The authority you give us does not dictate response, nor is our faithfulness measured by the response. Our job is to go, to walk and to offer, to proclaim your deliverance and offer healing for body and soul, to proclaim your welcome and offer blessing no matter the location, to proclaim your repentance and offer your salvation and hope. We bow humbly before the honor of you for choosing us. We rise and we walk with you. Grant us the authority and the grace and the strength we need. Send us forth to do your bidding. As your son has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us continue now singing a hymn that may be a bit unfamiliar. It's relatively new in the hymnal. It is hymn number 263, When Jesus the Healer. Uh, we will sing verses 1, 2, 5, 6, and seven, let us sing. When 
Jesus the healer passed through Galilee. Heal us, heal us today. The deaf came to hear and the blind came to see. Heal us, Lord Jesus. A paralyzed man was led down through a roof. Heal us, heal us today. His sins were forgiven, his walking the proof. Heal us, Lord Jesus. Us. The lepers were healed and the demons cast out. Heal us, heal us today. A bad woman straightened to laugh and to shout. Heal us, Lord Jesus. The twelve were commissioned and sent out in twos. Heal us, heal us today, to make the sick whole and to spread the good news. Heal us, Lord Jesus. There's still so much sickness and suffering today. Heal us, heal us today. We gather together for healing and pray. Heal us, Lord Jesus. I invite you to be standing for the reading from the Holy Gospel. For Mark's telling of the good news. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Be seated. ask you, as I always do, to pray with me. First, that, that I would faithfully speak, but also that you would faithfully and expectantly and receptively listen. And finally, that the Spirit of God might be in this place and move through this place and in us and around us to make of my words God's word. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I will tell you that I am careful in pulpits like this. Because the first time I ever stepped into a pulpit that, that uh, required walking up the steps, 
At some point in the sermon, I stepped back just too far. And while nothing was broken, and in fact, I only made it down a couple of steps, I, I, do, I do have some consciousness that it's back there. The joke in my family is that I like different movies than my wife does. Uh, I like happy endings. I like romantic endings. If I want angst and violence and, and conflict, I'll come to church. So the sort of movie I like is movies like City Slickers. If you haven't seen that movie, it's, it's worth going and renting. It's funny, and it's sweet. It's about a group of men who are at that stage of life where they stand on the, on the, just on the curb about to fall into their midlife crisis. And each of them has a different issue going, but, but somehow they decide that the way to, to deal with this is to sign on to go on a real, honest-to-goodness cattle drive. So they load up and they... Jay's heard the sermon. They load up and they go to this ranch and they're going to travel across country with this herd of cattle. Now, Billy Crystal plays Mitch, who's sort of the, the, the key figure here, but the one you remember is Curly. Jack Palance plays Curly, and it is wonderful. Curly is the real cowboy, the real honest-to-goodness cowboy, the real scare-the-living-daylights out of Mitch and his friends cowboy. And sort of the defining moment of the movie, the movie, the moment in the movie that most everyone remembers, is when Mitch and Curly are, are out together, just the two of them riding with the herd. And, and Curly is, is, is kind of being dismissive of these city slickers who come out and says, you know, you spend 10 months a year putting knots in your rope and you think two weeks out here will fix it. And they says, you know what the meaning of life is? And Mitch says, no, what? And Curly goes, and Mitch says, your finger? <laughs> Curly says, no, one thing. Just one thing. You stick to that and everything else doesn't mean anything. Well, that's great, Mitch says. But what's that one thing? And Curly says, well, that's what you've got to figure out. I'd like for us to spend a few minutes this morning talking about one thing, about living life with some focus, with some purpose, and maybe even mission. For close to 30 years, I have been a volunteer with our state public television network, now Arkansas PBS. Uh, I'm one of those people that interrupts your favorite program to invite you to make a pledge. And when they first approached me about doing that, they gave me a ring binder about yay thick, full of scripts. And I took one look at it and I said, I don't, I don't think I can memor I don't think I can memorize all that. And he took the book back and he says, Well, forget about it. Just tell them the telephone number and ask them to call. Everything else is just giving them time to get to the phone. Tell them the phone number, ask them to call. You've got one message. J. 
Jesus said some things that I wish he hadn't. Uh, and the passage we read this morning is one of them. It's that passage where he tells them to take nothing with them on their journey except a walking stick. No bread, no bag, no money, not even, an extra not even a change of clothes. Now that's traveling light. And I wish he hadn't said that because, as it was with Megan, that hits a little close to home for me. I always pack too much. I went to the beach a while back. I had enough clothes for a month, but we were just staying a week. I had enough sunscreen for the summer. And if I overpacked that much for that trip for a week, imagine what it was like a few years ago when I was going to Puerto Rico to serve a church there for two months. And I didn't know what would be expected. Would I need clothes for the beach? Would I need dress clothes? I would need something for Sundays, of course. I would need my alb and my stole and all of that stuff. And then, of course, there were books. I would need books. I would need my Bible and books to prepare sermons for those two months. Oh, yes, needed my computer. Uh, needed. I would be embarrassed for you to know how many cartons I shipped to San Juan before I went down there. It's like that at home, too. On the shelves, in my house are books I'm not going to read again. In my closet are clothes that have shrunk. <laughs> I'm kind of wishing I hadn't mentioned that. They made fun of me at the first service, too. I've got boxes and boxes of photographs. I know their family, but I don't know who they are. Clutter. Clutter. But I'm a real good person to travel with because whatever you forgot or whatever you ran out of, I've got it. In my car are four umbrellas, three flashlights, two fire extinguishers. You can go look. My son-in-law is at the other extreme. He's a remarkable young man. If you ask to see his billfold, he pulls out one credit card, his driver's license, and a little cash. His billfold is a paper clip. Mine? Oh, let's see. Driver's license, a couple of credit cards, uh, all my insurance cards. A list of the medicine, medications that my wife takes, a list of the medications that I take. Uh, there are a couple of stamps in there in case I want to send a letter. Uh, oh, yes, and there are always a couple of band aids. Now, I will tell you, I very seldom get asked for a band aid, but when I need one, Much of my life is surrounded by clutter. How is it for you? Jesus sent them out and he told them to travel light. No extra clothes, no extra cash, no bread, no baggage. But he promised them they would have everything they needed. Now, when I read the Bible, and when you read the Bible, I think one of the appropriate ways to approach it is to say, where do I find myself in this story? Where do I find my story in God's story? Well, some days I'm the one who runs to Jesus and says, I'm going to go with you. I will follow you anywhere. First, let me tend to my father's funeral. You remember Jesus' reply? Leave the dead to bury the dead. Whoa. That's cold. Jesus, I, I just don't know about that. Or 
Or I ask Jesus what I need to do. I said, Jesus, I've, 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 been a good, I've been a good disciple, I think. I've kept all the commandments, but I feel like there must be something. And Jesus says, tell you what you do. All that stuff you've got, sell it. Sell it all, all of it, all of it. Sell it all, give the proceeds to the poor, and then come follow me. Jesus, I'm not sure I can do that. Now, sometimes this is just a lesson that we didn't learn as little children. It's the lesson of the difference between wanting and needing. The church I served a few years ago used to send a lot of young people to Ozark Mission Project every summer. They'd go out to some remote part of the state and they would, they would build wheelchair ramps for people who, who needed them or they would, uh, they would replace window screens or, or, or window glass sometimes or they would paint houses. And they, would, they, they were doing this for the people they called their neighbors and they would, they would spend time with these people and they would they would get to know these people. And these are people who were living on the edge. And these kids would then come home after spending a week in one of the poorest parts of the state. And one young man came home and, and his mom wanted to know what had happened, what they'd done, what his experience was. And, and as teenagers sometimes do, he reverted to, to, the, to the teenage monosyllable vocabulary. Yep. Nope. If it was particularly important, uh-huh. And his mom pressed him. She wanted to know what it was like, and he was strangely quiet. And she says, but what happened? And he finally says, well, Mom, all I can tell you is that I will never again say that I need a new iPhone. Jesus said we would have what we really need. So what is it that we're about? What is it that God wants us to be doing? What is that one thing? That one thing, our ministry, our mi and what's standing in the way. Anthony de Mello uh, was a Jesuit priest who collected stories and parables from, from all manner of, of faith traditions. And uh, one of his collections is this little book, The Song of the Bird. And there's a story in it I think I'd like for you to hear. The title of the story is The Monk and the Woman. Two Buddhist monks on their way to the monastery found an exceedingly beautiful woman at the riverbank. Like them, she wished to cross the river, but the water was too high. So one of the monks lifted her onto his back and carried her across. His fellow monk was thoroughly scandalized. For two hours he berated him on his negligence in keeping the rule. Had he forgotten he was a monk? How dare he touch a woman? And worse, carry her across the river. What would people say? Had he not brought their holy religion into disrepute? And so on. The offending monk patiently listened to the never-ending sermon. Finally, he broke in. Brother, I dropped that woman at the river. Are you still carrying her? What is it that we should have left at the river? What is it that we should no longer be carrying? What is it that we should have left behind? Is it some old resentment? 
a grudge that's old enough to drink? Or some grief or, or, or guilt? Some kind of garbage? Is it some lesser loyalty? Something we give our best to that is not worth and worthy? Some prejudice, one of our isms, ageism, raceism, sexism, maybe even Methodism. For some of us, it's anger. And for some of us, it's ambition. It's the fear or the failure or the doubt. It's whatever it is that is keeping us from being and doing what God intended. What's the clutter? What is it you should have left back at the edge of the river? Jesus told them to take nothing with them, only a walking stick, no bag, no baggage, no money, not even a change of clothes. The call to follow Jesus is a call to traveling life. Let us pray. May these words of my mouth and may the meditations that you find in our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord, our strength and our salvation. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we are one body with many members. We all bring different gifts together. All of our gifts help us to proclaim Christ to our community and to the world. During this time of excuse me, reflection, you are invited to prepare your offering. You may give online or leave your offering in one of the wooden cross boxes at the exits of the worship space as you leave. Thank you for your generosity. Because of your gifts, we are able to provide sweet Sundays for our children's ministry participants. Let us pray. Creator God, you have given us dominion over all the earth. With this covenant to care for the earth, we are called to give our time, talents, and gifts. Bless the time we give, that it may be purposeful. Bless the talents we bring, that it may have meaning. Bless the gifts we bear so that they are given in pure love. Thanks be to you, our creator. Amen. now invite you to lift up to God and to each other confessions of your heart. When the business, busyness of our lives erodes the intentions of our hearts, merciful God, forgive us. When our personal agendas take precedence over reaching out to others, merciful God, forgive us. When we only half listen to those who cry out to be fully heard, merciful God, forgive us. Gracious and merciful God, forgive us for past faults and help us in the present and future to make ourselves more available to the hurting world that surrounds us. Equip us to be patient and compassionate listeners proclaiming the gospel not in overbearing ways, 
but sensitively and lovingly. Strengthen us with the Holy Spirit to be fruitful and active witnesses to Jesus in all we do and say. Amen. You are loved. When you love God, you love others. You give yourself to God by serving others. Know that in God's love, there is forgiveness, healing, and reconciliation. Thanks be to God. Amen. We all stand as you are able and join me in singing our closing hymn this morning, number 381, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as you go from this place, I invite you to leave behind those things which are not needful, those things which are not 
helpful. Those things which are not hopeful, those were things which are best left behind. God will give you all you truly need. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.